Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Mellow Mama and today I'll be discussing elimination communication. First of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by and for those of you that are not new and you've been waiting patiently for this video, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all of your support and your encouragement, your messages, your comments, the fact that you even you know, enjoy this content, it means so much to me and I'm so passionate about everything that I talk about and about my platform, this channel, so, you know, it means a lot more than I can say in uh, a minute or two, but I just want you to know that I'm really grateful for any of you guys that have subscribed to my channel, that have liked my videos, just watched my videos, especially those of you that are becoming really engaged audience members. <laughs> Is that a weird thing to say? I don't know. But yeah, for those of you that are really starting to like get into this material and you tell me that you're reading the books that I'm suggesting, it just, it's so awesome to me and um, I can't say thank you enough, so thank you again. But anyway, let's talk about elimination communication. This one was a little bit hard for me to film because for the longest time I was like, I want to share my actual experience with them, I want to document it and show them how to kind of go about doing this, but it sort of contradicts everything I stand for as far as my respectful relationship with Donovan, my son. I didn't want to objectify him as some sort of like demonstration object, I guess, it's no better word. So I decided not to do that. I don't think it's necessary for you guys to understand this concept or to apply what I'm going to teach you or share about my experience. So you're not going to see lots of videos of Donovan using the potty, even though I know it's kind of exciting, like when you see a little baby going to the bathroom on, in a bowl or on the potty, like we have that adorable little potty that you might have seen in his day in the life of a nine month old. I know, that's like so cute and it's so, so cool for me at least, like every time Donovan uses the bathroom like that I'm, I'm in shock, kind of. This was all very foreign to me and something that I was actually a little bit put off by at first. So for it to be working and for him to really be communicating his needs with me and from a very early age, it's really cool. So I'm sorry that I can't actually share that with you, but I'm sure you guys understand um, that, you know, if Donovan could talk to me about it, I'm I'm almost 100% sure he would probably request that I not share him going to the bathroom for all of my <laughs> lovely subscribers. <laughs> but anyway, this concept is super cool and it's something that I really highly recommend people consider. I know poop and pee are uncomfortable topics and um, that is what it is, but you know, for me, my goal as a parent, and you might be familiar with me and my channel by this time, and you're like, yes, Caitlin, we know you want to have this blah blah blah. My goal is to create a loving, respectful, conscious, healthy relationship with my son Donovan, who's now nearly 11 months old and I want him to have the same sort of relationship with himself and with his body and so I love anything that includes communication and when I read about elimination communication um, at first I was like heck yeah let's do this and then you know first page diaper free I was like maybe not maybe not I don't know about that <laughs> I'm gonna share with you guys you know, a little bit about EC, about our experience, what we decided to do, how it's helped us, how it's helped Donovan, and um, some things that I wish I would have done differently and been more committed to, and just some random facts about, you know, hygiene for babies. <laughs> this is um, a very common practice all around the world, but mostly in non-Western societies in which Babies are not ever put in diapers, but simply observed for their signals and cues for when they need to pee and poop. And then when those signals are happening, the mom or the dad, whatever, the guardian, takes the baby and places them in an appropriate place for them to pee or poop. For example, we used a bowl when Donovan was an infant and I would just place him over the bowl while he peed or pooped. And that's what they're doing, these non-Western mothers, until they sort of really get a rhythm. They really start to identify the signal so clearly and the cues so clearly that they consistently take the baby to the same place or to the same position to go to the bathroom, at which point the baby now understands, okay, 
when I pee, when I poop, my parent likes me to be in this particular place. That's when communication can happen. The baby can actually really tell you in some sort of way, aside from just their normal cues like freezing or squirming or getting fussy, that they need to go to the bathroom. Most people that use this practice notice that they can very easily tell and communicate with their children around three months of age. Around six months of age, they can have their children go to the bathroom sort of on command. I didn't have that experience, I have to say, but I was not committed like these people were. This is a completely normal practice and sort of like funny to put a label on. I'm sure, you know, certain people that this is like second nature to, they'd watch this video and be like, Okay, idiot, like, yeah, you just, <laughs> babies don't want to be in a soiled diaper all day, like, why are you calling it elimination communication, like it's refined or something, it's just normal. But for us, we have a very weird relationship with poop and pee, like I mentioned, so it's clearly a foreign concept and something that very few people, at least no people that I've talked to, actually exercise in their households. Right away, babies, especially like I said in these non-Western societies, they learn to control their bowel movements from day one. And this is a big misconception. There's lots of people that will say that they don't, that they can't communicate that to you, that they don't understand. But I can tell you firsthand that my son definitely, definitely communicated to me when he needed to go to the bathroom specifically. There was no coincidence there. It was always consistent for mothers that use elimination communication and of course these non-western mothers that I keep referring to they have the same experience. Babies know immediately um, that you know pee and poop are human functions that they have and they want to communicate to you they don't want to be dirty no one wants to be dirty I don't think that's that's when you start right away if you can and yeah you're probably going to get peed on for a few months, you know, like I said, it's not until around three months for many people that they can really consistently um, avoid accidents and, and read their children's cues and communicate with their babies, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into the details, I guess, of how to deal with that, but right away you should start. Why to use elimination communication for me is very simple. I want a healthy, respectful relationship with my son. And although this doesn't coincide with Rye parenting, which is something I'm super passionate about and that I always share about and talk about, Magda Gerber was kind of all for this gentle approach of listening to your child's need um, regarding when to get out of diapers to say, you know what, take your time. I'm going to listen to my kids and when they express that they're ready to start using the bathroom, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and take the steps there. But until that time, they're going to be in diapers. The problem there, and there, there are many issues personally that I have with that philosophy, the main one being um, health issues. In Dr. Lekovich's book, Diaper Free Before Three, she mentions, you know, the research the proven facts that staying in diapers for such an extensive period of time actually increase the odds of UTIs, uh, urinary tract infection, voiding disorders, wetting disorders. In general it's just it's a first in human history to be in diapers for the extensive period that children are in diapers today. For example in 1914 babies were known to be on the potty by three months old. By 1921 there was a pamphlet going around that said no more diapers to wash by around six or eight months. In the 70s the average age was 18 months to be potty trained and in 1996, you actually needed a prescription for children over the weight of 35 pounds to get diapers for them. And that's, you know, the average weight of a three-year-old. That's very common today, I think, to have three-year-olds still in diapers. Along with that, I don't think that Magda was maybe even considering that elimination communication is an option. I think if she had been introduced to the concept, um, and I don't know, you can maybe leave me a comment uh, if you you know that she's just very anti-EC. Um, I, I feel like from what I've read from her and Emmy Pickler that a natural is best with everything. I think if she had been familiarized with this concept that you can just communicate and observe 
uh, that she'd be all for it because those are things that she was really passionate about, that she really stood for, especially with caregiving acts like changing or feeding. Um, just being all there, being 100% present with your children. And that's what you have to be for elimination communication or you'll get peed on. I think um, it's very respectful and that's the main reason that I chose to you know, use this concept in my home. I also think that it's great to eliminate waste. We use probably a third of the diapers that a normal family uses with a new baby or with a baby in general. We really don't have to use many diapers at all for Donovan at this age because he really communicates with me at this point, especially when we're at home. I also think that it's great to start the conversation about hygiene, about your body and the relationship that you have with your body and to understand how it works. For me, the sooner the better. There are lots of different ways to actually go about this concept and and apply it. I personally, like I said, use diapers. We use diapers when we go out, except for like the park or something, where I know that I can just have him go uh, to the bathroom there if they have one, or if, you know, we're outside and there's no one around, like I can just have him pee outside in the grass or poop, and we have little bags to clean it up, and obviously wipes to clean him up. <laughs> so we don't use diapers unless he is asleep or we're going out on a family trip. Actually, I have to say honestly that when Ben is home, we we use diapers mostly because he's very uncomfortable with the fact that like Donovan could pee on him or pee on something like the furniture. Ben has seen unfortunately in the beginning stages like one too many accidents so he's like freaked out at this point. So we do use diapers when he's home but I mean we're home alone all day most of the time. So Donovan is diaper free a lot. That's that was our choice. Some people go diaper free all the time, and that's fine. In the beginning, so I'll just start from there. We would basically just put towels wherever Donovan was, and he was obviously diaperless, and you know that was fine. So he would just if he had an accident, which I'm not, I don't even like calling it an accident because it was probably like a fail on my part not watching closely enough, but I'm sorry, I can't just be like a vulture over him all day long waiting for him to pee. Plus, Donovan's signal in the beginning was that he would freeze before he peed. So I really had to be just watching him attentively in order to catch that one. It was hard. Babies pee a lot more than I anticipated, actually. So in the instance that Donovan is diaper-free or was diaper-free in the beginning, we always had a bowl next to us and I used the bowls that we got from the hospital during his first bath. They're like blue ones. There's two of them. And I just, you know, would place that wherever we were, like if we were in the living room or something, I would just stick it really close to Donovan. That way if I did notice that he needed to go, or that he was going, I would just put him over it, obviously over the towel again, of course, and I had the second bowl in his drawer, actually we were using this dresser, so I just had it in this drawer with his diapers, so anytime I was like changing his clothes or, um, you know, giving him his little baby massage or something, like I had it really close and handy there also, plus this was in his nursery, so i just pull that bowl out if I didn't have the other one, like if I forgot it in the other room or something. Yeah. Never really experienced a problem, especially never with poop. I never experienced an accident with poop because babies and poop, it's like the most obvious thing that they do ever. They turn red, at least my son would turn super red and he was like squeezing and pushing. Um, so it was very easy to get him there. I love you. Hey, I'm so happy to see you. Do you want, I'm filming a video. Hey guys, <laughs> I swear this happens every time. You okay? Hmm. I never shut the door, but because I was filming, I didn't want to wake him up, so he was a little bit freaked out. Hey, you okay? <laughs> and ironically enough, he's going to need to go to the bathroom in like five minutes. This is a cue for us. So anyway, um, Donovan, we're going to quickly wrap this up. So, we had the little bowls next to us, and I would look for his cues and listen for his cues, but around three months, Donovan would pretty much vocalize to me when he needed to go to the bathroom. When he needed to pee, thank goodness he didn't just always freeze, 
he started to identify the fact that I liked him going over the bowl and he would say, ah, to me. And if I looked at Donovan and he was like, ah, like just talking about his environment, I'd be like, okay, he doesn't have to pee. Every time that he would say, ah, and I looked and he was making eye contact with me, I knew he had to go pee. Consistently, he would pee over the bowl every time um, in those cases. And I noticed he would hold himself from going until I had the bowl under him. And that was around three months, maybe actually even a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You have a couple of eye boogies. You want to get down? Okay, take my hand. When Donovan would go before I could read his signal or get him above the bowl, I always made sure, and this goes for when he's actually going over the bowl also, and now on his little potty, we make sounds. If he's peeing, we always say, pss, 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 pss. Don't, not now, bud. And if he's going poop, we say p -p 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 -p. P -p 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 -p. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to go. I know you have to go soon. P -p 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 -p. I'm afraid. I don't want you to go now. <laughs> yeah. P -p -p. Those are the two like sounds that we make while he goes to the bathroom, and we've done that since he was so tiny. And um, he definitely associates them. Like just now he was looking at me like... Uh... As time went by you can see that it becomes very easy and very natural process to sort of just watch for his cues and that's okay. Um, and I even make the sounds if he's in a diaper, okay? Just so you guys understand that it's always important to be communicating. No matter what. No matter if you're in danger of being peed on or pooped on or not. Make sure that you're being clear with your, your baby. One more important thing that I would consider part of the how to is considering feeding times, especially in the beginning. Anytime Donovan breastfed, around five minutes later, sometimes a little bit later, and it was always like, come on, like, do you gotta go or not? He would go pee and poop immediately. I mean, five minutes, less than ten minutes every time he would need to go to the bathroom. So that's something to really consider. It's a great way to just, you know, easily keep in mind this whole process. You can be like, okay, just breastfed, maybe let's not put a diaper, you know, and let's, let's just see. Let's just see if my baby wants to go. And Donovan, like I said, was very consistent uh, after breastfeeding every single time. But, you know, there were times where it took longer and times where it was pretty much immediate. It just sort of depends, I guess, on how much they're eating and their last feeding and all that stuff. The same thing goes with nap times and feeding. Just consider how the digestive system works and how your baby's body is processing the food and the, I guess, liquids that they're consuming. As far as supplies go, you really don't need anything at all, but I recommend towels, like I mentioned, bowls to keep around your house. I only had two, but I would recommend maybe two or three. I use diapers, so I guess that would count on the supply list. So I use diapers from time to time while sleeping, while going out of the house, and sometimes at home when I know that I'm not going to be able to spend as much quality, um, you know, attentive time with Donovan. And like I mentioned, when Ben is home and being a scaredy cat. As Donovan got older, I did buy him a tiny potty that was very Montessori style, and I love it. It's just a miniature toilet. In fact, I think it's right in here. So this is Donovan's little potty. It is clean, okay? But it's so cute, and it's from this company called Summer. But you can find it at Target. It's really nothing too fancy, but when I saw it, I was like, I have to have that. I love that little potty. And, oh my gosh, this is um, actually very anti-everything I stand for because it's not in reality, it doesn't make any sense, but it flushes. <laughs> you can just take the bowl out. There's also a pee shield, I think is what they refer to it as, but you can actually put a little insert in so that, if, especially if you have little boys, um, they don't pee everywhere because when they're sitting down, their little pee pee is still... It's like up, it's not pointing down into the potty. So the pee shield is great and you can remove it and wash it obviously and then the bowl comes out. So that's really great. I'm really happy with that investment and it's been awesome for Donovan. He loves his potty and he now climbs onto it on his own. 
But for those of you that don't want to buy that little potty, you can get just an insert for your toilet. And I think that's a really great option also because clearly our kids see us use the bathroom, at least mine does. You know, I invite him to see me go to the restroom because I want him to understand that this is normal, this is part of being a person, and um, it's not weird at all for me. So, uh, yeah, a little insert seat would be great as well. We are um, very anti-behaviorism. We do not use behaviorist tactics on our son. <laughs> They're just harmful to any relationship in general, I think. Oh, bribery, manipulation, coercing of any kind. Uh, those are things that I just refuse to um, implement into the way I relate to my son, the way that I uh, interact with him. But they're especially harmful, I think, for something like this that is just supposed to be a natural, easily learned process. We also don't ever imply that anything is gross about pee or poop, so I never tell Donovan that he's stinky or has a stinky butt or um, like, ooh, smelly, pee you. We, we don't say things like that. Just because I never want Donovan to feel ashamed of his natural bodily functions. So we don't say ew, we don't say yucky or ooh, stinky boy. And we, like I said, we don't reward or punish Donovan or something like that when he doesn't want to go on the potty or when he does go on the potty. And he's got the tripod. This is like the classic Donovan move. The last thing I want to touch on is the fact that anything you do with your children can be um, you know, sort of ruined, I guess, or tarnished by behaviorism, this reward and punishment system, this um, good boy or good girl mentality. We want our kids to do things from an intrinsic place, to know themselves and to understand who they are and their needs. And we want to make sure that, um, you know, they're doing things out of their own personal desires, not to please or impress us. It's just the foundation for a very unhealthy relationship with themselves and with us. So, you know, consider this option. You don't have to if you don't want to, but just understand that elimination communication could also be unhealthy if you... Uh, go about it the wrong way. And for those of you maybe watching and thinking, well, yeah, Caitlin, there's there's lots of research that indicates psychological damage to kids from early potty training. And I would say, yeah, I know it's actually not proven that it's the timing. It's rather the attitude that um, the parent decides to go about learning about hygiene. Sorry, Donovan is like on the move now and there's a cord. I'm a little bit on edge. Here, I have my hand here for you. Oh, okay. You're coming. I just want to finish with the fact that obviously this isn't for everybody, but it's been great for us. I'm really happy that I did it. In fact, I wish I would have been more consistent, used you know, fewer diapers, and um, communicated even more clearly with Donovan and watched him more uh, closely in the beginning and obviously always. We've had a good experience, right bud? <laughs> Elimination communication is in no means some sort of like rush or something that I want to be like, yeah my son goes to the potty or my son uses the bathroom at a very early age. It's not about that at all. <laughs> at all. This is the thing that I'm highly against. I'm all about natural development and teaching and uh, respect and I feel that those three things are all a big part of EC and that's why I chose to do it. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it was informative for you and helpful and um, hopefully maybe you'll start to consider elimination communication for your own baby or babies or uh, the day you decide to have babies I don't know if you have any questions or you know you want to know more please just leave me a comment I love hearing from you guys and uh, if you haven't already please subscribe uh, to my channel I love all of you and I'm so happy to be doing this thank you for watching I'll see you next time mm -hmm.